the market maker? Who is that bookie in stock market? We'll get exactly to that uh, now, Vivekji. So we have the advantage of being in live market. Uh -huh. So we can pull out the live market as it is right now. I will pull out the option chain. Oh, we are going to discover the bookie today. Yes, we are going to discover the bookie today. And we are also going to address probably one of the myths that people have that uh -huh. if you are on high probability trades, uh -huh. that you are the bookmaker and that you will make money. We'll address exactly that here. So today market is uh, flat, we are at 17,000, we gap down and yeah. there we pulled back to 17,000. And I want you to look at this as a betting board. And I'll tell you how to look at this as a betting board. Okay. For example, let us say you want someone um, who has a high risk to reward, you want to make a lot of money on your bet. Yeah. Let us say you, do you think the market will go up or down sir, from here? How will I just, know Just make a random prediction and we'll work from there. Uh, I it's actually market is in a very different, I don't know where the market Okay, let's say randomly that the market is going to go down. Yeah. We feel we want to, how do we know what is the bookie's odds? Okay. To find out the probability. Yeah. Right now, let us say you feel that by expiry, market will expire around 16,700. Okay. Or below 16,700. Okay. Right? right now, one way of placing your bet would be to buy the 16,800 put option for 46 rupees and sell the 16,700 put option for 30 rupees. You will be paying about 15 rupees. This is which expiry? This is the current December expiry. December expiry. December oh, expiry. December. So how much money will you be paying? You'll be paying about 15 rupees. Right. What is your max profit? Max profit is 100 rupees, right? Yes, 100 rupees. So 85 rupees will be the profit that you make. 100 Correct. rupees is what you will get. Back. Correct. So the odds is very simple how to calculate the odds. Basically, if you were to, for simplicity's sake, let us say um, seven and a half, one in seven and a half, because if your payoff is going to be uh, seven and a half times your money, then roughly one in seven and a half is the probability that it uh, happens, that particular event happens. Okay. Right. So similarly, one other way of looking at it is the delta column. Delta gives you the rough probability that a particular strike is at the money at the time of expiry. Yeah. Right. But this is, let's forget all of this for now. Okay. There cannot be, if you look at this from the same expected value concept, if you go by risk and reward, there cannot be a positive expected value for anyone here because you can be on the buying side of this probability or the selling side of this probability. Okay. Matlab, you can either buy the put option and sell the uh, lower put option, place that bet, or you can take that bet. Okay. So inherently, there is no edge in selling or buying. But edge can come from your risk to reward. Like, let me put this simply. Mm -hmm. Let us say you're paying 15 rupees. Okay. Today, intraday. So, I have, say, executed the strategy. So, I have huh. bought a put option. I have sold a put option. Correct. So, I have paid 15 rupees. Right? Correct. Let us say you've executed it. Yeah. And up. And what you decide to do is that if it goes to 10 rupees intraday, you take a stop loss. Oh, that 15 rupees, I'm not thinking of letting the whole 15 rupees go. Correct. I'm saying that 15, when it becomes 10, then I will execute the stop loss. Correct. Okay. okay. Or if it goes to 25 rupees, okay. you book profit. Okay. Then you can create a positive edge here. As long as, see, there is no intrinsic edge in selling options or buying options. Mm. Mathematically, that makes no sense. People who say that I sell options, that is my edge because of that I make money. What they mean to say is most of the time they made money because it's a high probability trade. Can you please explain this concept again to me when when you say that there is no intrinsic edge of being a buyer or a seller? Correct. But different people have different styles. For example, you know, we know some people who are very active sellers, they make money and they claim that they are very good sellers and they make money because of that, as you rightly said. Correct. But then we had uh, Asit uh, with me a couple of days ago and he's a buyer and he has an edge there. Correct. So I can correlate your statement that every person has some edge, but there is no intrinsic edge. Correct. In the market. Correct. Can you please explain this? Absolutely. So, let me put it this way, um, Vivekji. For example, right now the same trade that we uh, looked at. So, it would be uh, buying the 16800 put option now at 45 and let's say 45 yeah. and this uh, selling the 16700. The probability of this event occurring is not 1 in 7.5, 1 by 6 times roughly you can say, right? Hmm. So, 1 by 6 times most of the time that trade is going to lose you money if you hold till expiry, which okay. means five out of six times, you're going to lose money on that. Only once you will make money on it. Okay, got your point. So if you go by the same expected value, yeah. the probability of you winning, uh -huh. which is one by six, 
but you're, if you're able to convert the entire six times on your money, then there is no edge because it becomes one. Yeah. You're not getting, because as long as you go by the probability as an inverse of the payoff, there is no intrinsic edge in buying or selling. It just means that you are taking a trade which is supposed to lose you money. Mm. And as somebody who is accepting that trade, you are taking a trade which most of the time is supposed to make you money. Okay. But there is no value that is coming over than one in terms of your expected value. Now, this gets a little bit, uh, uh, this thing. How did you calculate the value less than one in this case? Uh, can you tell me the number? You said one by okay. six. Uh, let, me, let me look at something that comes to something a little, um, a round number. Okay. Let's take the 16. Say for example, Haan. that was a round number 15. Haan. So, when you bought and you sold, it was a 15 premium which you paid. Correct. So, how is that payoff less than one? Okay. So, basically 15 divided by 85, that gives you the probability of the entire event occurring. Oh, okay. just like what we did in the in case of coin, in case of that roller game. Correct. Let's, for simplicity sake, say you paid 10 rupees credit yeah. and your max profit is 100 yeah. uh, 90 rupees, 90. 100 rupees spread. Right. So basically, the chance that you win, it's a, if you're being paid 1 is to 10, the chance that you're winning roughly, you can say also, is 1 in 10. Yeah. Win that maximum money I'm talking yeah. about, not anywhere in between. Yeah. So from there, you can say that, okay, if the probability of the event occurring is 1 by 10 hmm. and your payoff is 10, then 10 by 10, like you multiply 1 by 10 into 10 rupees, you're getting 1. Right, right. So there cannot be any intrinsic edge in this. Correct. Right, the, the edge has to come from somewhere else. So there is no edge in buying or selling. But if you have, for example, a particular system that tells you that you buy this at 10 rupees, you buy this particular spread at 10 rupees, if it goes to 8 rupees, you take a stop loss. Hmm. And you can take a stop loss with Vigji only when the market is live. You right. can't take a stop loss when the market is uh, closed. Right, right. right. Or when it goes to 12, you start trailing your profit. Hmm. It goes to 14, you trail your profit. So when you win, you always win more than 2 rupees. Uh, let us forget everything else. You and I take a trade. We don't know 50% of the time we might be right, 50% of the time we might be wrong. As long as we maintain a positive reward, we're able to let our winners win big hmm. and let our losers cut them small, we will make money. That is the only holy grail according to me in the market. I think. One of the main reasons I have been, and I also tend to be somebody who takes high probability trades. I think why I have survived in the market is whenever my high probability trade starts to lose, I'm out. I'm out faster than anybody else. I run away from there and I come back the next day because I'm an intraday trader. 